bet you. I'm back, going harder than ever. Make the change through the trial and errors. Put the work in, get it all together, and double it up, nigga. What? Popping all that shit, but we don't give a fuck. I got shit on lock, and that's real. My homie said we in the game. Well, let me tell you how I feel. I'm about to double up everything, all the profit. I got it in the position to get it, nigga. Most people will fuss it. Don't catch me slipping on the mission to make it happen. Get the back end, ain't no yapping. Niggas get the cap and know you play the back end. If Papa was a Rolling Stone, I'll hold the drone. Find his fucking hat, say this for moms, then let him hold the chrome. Section A, baby, it raised me, moved me from home to home. Wicked food stamps was the vibe, nigga, they lie. Uh, bought to sold these bitches off for 199. Ain't no cap in my rap, you in that vibe, huh? Uh. Denzel Davon, welcome to the podcast, bro. What's good? What's good? Denzel Devon. Denzel Devon. What's good, man? What's up, boss? Uh, first thing I want to ask, uh, if you could just let all the viewers know where you're from and where you grew up and how it was growing up in your area. Where? Where? So um, I'm originally from Buffalo, New York. Uh, right now, I'm living in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, but um, yeah, man, Buffalo, New York, bro, just basically coming up on the east side of Buffalo. Um, basically lived kind of all over. Uh, in Buffalo as well, like on the south side. Um, you know what I mean? But, I mean, growing up in Buffalo, bro, it's just Section A, baby. Um, single mom, you know what I mean? And uh, mom dudes basically just had us in church all the time and uh, basically came up in music with, like, playing the drums and whatnot. You know what I mean? Like, really started there. And, um, I mean, like, yeah, man, that's, that's, that's basically it, man, like, struggling, basically, like, you know what I'm saying, like, Section 8 stuff, regular stuff, like, that, basically any inner city black person that will go through, like, the stuff that you hear, like, Benny and talk about, like, all of that stuff, like, definitely intersects with my story as well, like, you know what I mean, just growing up around that, like, seeing it, you know what I mean, like, yeah, yeah, Buffalo's crazy, man, for sure, for sure. Yeah, he's he's rapping about it, but you're growing up in it, that, that's wild. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, growing up there, what were you even before? Like, you know, you were listening to your own music and everything. What What were you hearing, like, in the streets of Buffalo? Like, what did you grow up like? What was playing being played around you? So for real, for real, when I came up, man, my mom didn't even play no like. She called it secular music. So like, <laughs> you know, what I mean, my mom played a lot of gospel. You know what I'm saying? So I had to like sneak off. And catch what I could, you know what I mean? And that, when, that was when, like, you know, like, MySpace, of course, like, you know, we grew up on Soldier Boy and all that stuff, like, Bob Law and all that. But, like, when mixtapes start dropping and everything, like, of course, like, Wayne, uh, Gucci, like, when Gucci had the Bart chain, you know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah. Joel's, you know what I mean? Like, I can't feel my face, like, all of that, like, um, definitely came up in that era, like, when niggas was really just spitting and then that, that underground was really kind of like underground for real. You know what I mean? Like you had to go to live mixtapes, you know, uh, what was the other one? Uh, uh, Rap Rilla or whatever, the little purple monkey or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, downloading, you know what I'm saying? LimeWire, all of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, so Wayne, all the Wayne mixtapes. Um, but yeah, that's what, was coming up about I had to, again I had to sneak off and my mom played a lot of Bonnie McClurk Lane, Londa Adams, CC Winans, BB and all of that, man. So I kinda got it all, man. Yeah, that's dope. And I'm from New Jersey, uh originally. So growing up there, I feel you on that on the East Coast, bro, is like huge mixtape wave. Yeah. Obviously all the New York rappers always, but like it was a real like underground scene during that time. No, for sure, for sure. No, uh, yeah, especially like well, and, and then it was weird because like in Buffalo, man, like Buffalo's kind of listened to like everything. So like the radio really kind of like gave us what you know, I guess what the main sound was, whatever. But like as far as like even with the mixtape, like we really like went to like down south rappers, which is kind of like crazy. Like like Gucci was able to come to Buffalo and do shows, like you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, niggas, like niggas loved Waka and like. OJ, you know, you know, OJ the Juice Man, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. Like, it's crazy, bro. So, like, Buffalo just is, it's crazy to see the sound that Buffalo has now, man, especially what's going on with Griselda and everything. Cause, like, coming up, it was like, bro, we didn't even have it. It felt like we didn't have our own sound. You're not, yeah. Part. There was, like, nothing there. 
Yeah. At, at least music wise. Yeah. Like people know, like, like most people don't know Rick James is from Buffalo. Yeah, I would never know that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. Rick James is from Buffalo. So most people would never know that. So like it's like wow. So yeah, man, Buffalo got some low key. I think uh I think Brian McKnight is from Buffalo as well, if I'm not mistaken. You can look that up and, and correct me if I'm wrong on that. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah, that's why I'm I'm interested, uh, because obviously right now Griselda's taken over. Obviously, everyone when they think of Buffalo, they think of them. Uh, you know, the East Coast rap sound, underground rap. Um, so what what got you interested and how old were you when you first started messing around and making your own music? Um, so I really started again, you know, like I said, I played I started I started playing drums when I was two, um, real early. Um I was a band geek coming up for real, for real. Like, you know, American Pie, one time at band camp, like that's me type shit, low key. <laughs> um, you know what I'm saying? So, but um, but yeah, man, I just always kind of like just always had an ear for it. You know what I mean? Like playing drums, just like when my mom was playing music, just I had my own drum set. So I would just play to whatever she was playing or whatever. And um, I remember just always wanting to just be on the set. Um, but as far as like writing and everything, um, I really started writing like once I got into college, my freshman year. Um, I was standing on dorm at um Niagara County Community College in Triple C. Um, and I had my homeboy Greg. Um, he went to Maryville High School. I went to Chief Thawaga Central. I graduated from there. My I went there myself when you senior year. Um, I came from East High. Um, but um, so my boy Greg he used to drive me back and forth to home because we both lived in Chihuahua, so he'll drive me home and everything, and we was listening. Like, that was when, like, Wiz was big, uh, Big Sean, uh, fucking Wale, um, you know what I'm saying, Big Crit, all of them coming up, Nipsey, um, and everything, and, like, uh, I was just always kind of, like, into making beats, you know what I mean? So, I like, I would always make beats, but, like, melodies and everything would always come to my head and just, like, different rhyme patterns and stuff. Um, so I started writing verses, um really taking it serious writing verses um I, I always wrote like little like poems and stuff like that um when i was younger but when i really started writing raps raps and like writing songs was in college um and that's when i kind of like would be on like uvu with people like i'll be on uvu with like my homegirls or whatever and be like y'all got this rap and listen to it you know what i'm saying y'all yo, yo, check me out yeah, yeah. Thing, you know what i'm saying like and they'll let me know you know what i'm saying like and again, my homie Greg, like, you know what I'm saying? He'd just be hyping me up. Yeah, bro. You know what I'm saying? Just go ahead and keep rapping, bro, because you nice. You know what I'm saying? You got the flow and all of that. So it was just like something that I just kind of kept going. And like eventually, like, not too long after, I ended up dropping out of college and um, ended up moving to Charlotte. Um, and moving to Charlotte with my mom, my two, with my two younger sisters. Um, and that's where, like, my little bro, rest in peace, my little bro, Samir. Um, he introduced me to my homie Unique Flow. Um, we called him Young L at the time, and he had a studio. And basically, like when I met him, like I was just trying to like come down here and do like just music stuff, or whatever. Because at the time, I felt like at the time it seemed like Buffalo like had like the, like it was like the it was a music scene in Buffalo. You know what I mean? But it just seemed like it was hard for people to really pop out of Buffalo. You know what yeah, I mean? No, like, no crazy, come... crazy hard, yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I looked at it as, okay, well, if I, if we move into Charlotte, like, I have to move to Charlotte with the plan to, like, at least try to pursue music in a city that, you know, may have more eyes and is closer to Atlanta. It's down here in these other cities in the South and everything. So, um, when I first met, when I first met Unique, um, unique is unique is my homie, you know what I'm saying? But like at the time, like he just a regular dude, like he was like selling mixtapes at the marathon or whatever. Like, so my my bro, he introduced That's fire me to that me. he was doing that. Yeah, so he was really, you know what I'm saying? Him and, other, and my other homie, they was, you know what I'm saying, they'll sell mixtapes at the marathon, like get them off like donation, all of that. Like, so um when I first met him, I went up to him and rapped for him, like he was an A and R or something, like he was gonna put me on. And like <laughs> he like he was with his mom, like got a little studio in his little closet, whatever. Yeah. Um, so that's when I say like those are like the kind of little baby steps that kind of led me up to uh this path, this journey of where I am now. But yeah, that's where it first started, like really taking it serious is in college when I really started writing rhymes. 
to say all that. Come back to that. Yeah. So, so how long ago was it? And how old were you when you, when obviously, you know, you go from writing when you're younger, you move to Charlotte, you have the plan to start taking it more seriously. When was it like when you come out, obviously, uh, under your name now? And when did you get the confidence to like start dropping it online? Because once you drop it online, you know how it is, bro. Anybody you've ever met could say whatever they want. Random mm-hmm. people saying whatever they want. Uh, mm-hmm. What gave you the confidence to start dropping online, and when was that? So, I kind of always like drop little songs here and there. Um, I always like the confidence to drop it is like, I don't know. I, I guess you could say I'm like overly confident with that because I feel like like I feel like I I can write and you know what I'm saying rhyme with the best of them. You know what I'm saying. So I always have the confidence to just put it out. Um, I would say for me, as far as confidence, as far as the uh, confidence of putting uh, music out, for me, the hard part was finding the confidence to put a body of work together and put that out. Yeah. That, to me, was a little bit more scarier and a little bit more of a, like, a fear that I had to get over because you're they're not just judging this one song and these couple bars and this hook. They're judging exact, like, this. they're judging these songs you put together as a whole. Yeah, something you worked on hard too. Right. Do they cohesively go together? You know what I'm saying? Uh, if there are skits, do the skits sound good with these songs? Do it make sense when the song comes on? Like things like that. That for me was like, okay, because I, I tried it one time like years ago. Like it was just kind of like a whatever kind of like project. Um, I caught it just because, because it was just because. Yeah, um, yeah. And it was just like seven songs that I had. I think it was like beats that I found off YouTube and some beats that I had produced myself. And it was just recorded by me, mixed and mastered by me. And it was just horrible. But I just <laughs> did it just to kind of like get over the hump of dropping a body of work. Yeah, you get it out like, of the way too. Yeah. Yeah, just to like get it out of the way. Um, and then eventually, um, you know, some time later, like um, Y'all Boys Got It with Jay One Time which J one time definitely is a big part of uh, also bringing that confidence to even drop what we did um, as well. Like, you know, having that confidence to do that and do it confidently the way that I did it, um, that definitely helped in building that. And also I'll say the people around me uh, helped mold the confidence and just making sure I had the mindset of going about it the right way and kind of doing things differently to make sure I'm, you know, giving myself the opportunity to really, um, expose myself, you know what I mean? Hell yeah, and you you brought it up. I was just about to bring it up. <clears throat> uh, y'all boys got it. You dropped this year eight songs. Um, I thought the production on it was fire. Um, Appreciate that, man. Your your voice sounds great on it too. Um, you're coming hard like with the raps. Um, so w- when you dropped the tape, right? What what was your idea behind it? Was it kind of the eight best songs you had at the time, or? Or were you like bringing it to the listener? Okay, I want you to listen one to eight. Nah, so when y'all boys got it, the way it happened was Jay one time. So I, um, so I have been seeing Jay one time um, through these events. This is girl named Portia the poet, starring Charlotte. She will put these events together called uh, Lyrical Healing. Um, and basically, you know, local artists will come together and perform, and you know, you get your set, you perform a few songs and everything. Jay one time was the person that was the DJ. He had played his beats, and his beats was just hard. Um, and I performed one time, and, you know, I had to go show love, and, you know, everybody over there uh, basically doing a thing. But, like, Jay one time just had them beats, and I was like, bro, he going crazy, you know what I'm saying? And he felt with what I had going on as well, which I appreciated, you know what I'm saying? So um, some time, like, we had, I guess, like, you know, just um, – just doing our thing like solo, like, you know what I'm saying? He's doing his thing, I'm doing my thing. And then like, I don't know, he just happened to hit me one day. I think he DM'd me. I can't remember if I DM him or if he DM'd me, but I think he DM'd me. And, you know, we just basically linked up in regards to just like having love for each other's art. You know what I'm saying? Like I always rocked to his beats and he rocked with how I came on, you know what I'm saying, on the beats with the flows and everything. And we just, you know what I'm saying, we're fans of each other. So, you know what I'm saying? He was like, yo, if you're trying to do an EP, let me know. I'm definitely trying to do an EP. What's up? 
You yeah, bro, his beat, his beats went crazy. Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Was, so like, why? I was why shocked, bro. Like, not yeah. shocked, but like, I was like, holy shit! Like, who's producing these tracks? You know? Yeah, J One Time is definitely to me one of the best, and and I ain't just gonna say Charlotte or Carolina for sure, because man, he he definitely definitely slept on, and that's why. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's why I fuck with him too, because I felt like I'm stepped on as well. You know what I mean? And that was uh, also just like the whole purpose of Y'all Boys Got, because, you know, it's a lot of people in the scene that's really doing their thing. And, you know, you got to show love and, you know, give them their, their props and their applause. You know what I mean? But you look at it and it's like, okay, Y'all Boys Got it. You know what I mean? But we got it too. So we got to tell ourselves Y'all Boys Got it as well. Like we really, you know what I'm saying? We just got to step it up and level it up and do exactly how we can do it. Um, but yeah, yeah, J One Time, the truth, and yeah, those eight tracks. So how they came about, J One Time was basically just sending me beats. Like he was just making beats and just sending me beats, and I was just choosing beats that I like. Um, and I was just writing to him over time, and um, over some months, uh, basically, I came up with. Um, I ended up having uh five songs, um, just off of the ones that he sent me, um, and J One Time dropped the project. Before y'all boys got it called Bobby Sales Thoughts. Um, great project. Definitely check it out. Yeah, I um, will. Yeah, he he um so he put that together, it has a lot of other dope um artists uh, from the city as well. Um and basically the skits that he had in between that were so crazy. Like the way he put everything together and everything, I was just like, bro, okay. I said you got like a mind to like actually you know what I'm saying, bring it together because I knew that I just didn't want the project to just be five songs and that's it. Like, you know what I mean? And I had ideas of doing it. So we sat down and he had played some skits that he had came up with and everything. And he ended up basically finding a way to intertwine and the way the, the cohesiveness of the songs, he found a way to intertwine it with those those skits as well, just to make the project even fuller and make it more alive. Um so Big ups to Jay one time for sure. Um, we got more stuff on the way. Um, he has another project on the way as well. But yeah, man, that's so that's how that's how that came about with uh, with those songs for sure. Yeah, bro. I, I encourage everyone to go check out your album. Y'all boys got it. It's eight songs long. Um production, like we just talked about, is amazing. Uh your flow on there is great too. I, I had no skips. I listened to it three times. I thought it was a great project. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, no doubt, bro. Who would you say are some of uh your influences? Um, man, definitely say like Biggie. Hell like, yeah, that was, that was like the first first person like that I went back and really did like listen to history on. You know, like, oh no, I have to listen to this nigga. Like, um, Biggie for sure. Um, this shit's just so smooth. It's just like, bro, it's so easy for him. It's like butter. Yeah, the way he does it is just, <laughs> it's, it's crazy. just crazy, man. It's like yeah. effortless. Mm -hmm. It just rolls out the tongue. Like, yeah. it just bounces off the B in the pockets <laughs> that he finds. Um, I'll say Biggie. <laughs> A few people are going to really kill me for my list. I'm not going to hold you. My homie's going to be like, bro, what? All right, so I'm going to say Biggie. Um, influences. I don't know, man. Honestly, bro, I have to say I'm really influenced by a lot. I can't really pinpoint it to one, one, one person or one artist, man. Um, because like, I could really kind of like do different styles and everything. Like, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Not to say I mean like that's kind of cliche for an artist to say. You know what I mean? But like, I could really kind of like do do different things so i don't want to ever say like i'm just influenced by one person or a specific group of artists because i listen to a lot like um yeah i've listened to like teasel touchdown recently like you know what i mean so like he's dope yeah he's like dope. you know what i'm saying like right now he's like inspiring me you know what I'm saying? yeah like, no hell yeah you know no, what i mean? think so it's, like, and I, I love your answer bro because like it is hard to pinpoint when there's so many like you could just like one thing that someone does or a bunch of things like there's because you're like me like i could tell like you're you're a real hip-hop head you know what i mean so it's yeah. like you can get influence from a thousand artists yeah yeah like yeah like tila has been on rotation west side has been in rotation west side's like, out is crazy 
crazy. It's that crazy. Helps. So like it's Stove it's God has sense. to drop immediately. Yeah, no, nah, Stove God sounds good on that, man. He went crazy on everything. He never he misses, like, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, man. So yeah, that yeah, I don't know. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. So I I I can't pinpoint it. But I, I, I will say like I do have like my moments where I go through like artists like where I just may binge an artist for some time. Um I do that a lot, like, and I may go out of the box, like, Tizo's out of the box for me. My sister put me on to him, and then I messed around and started binging Bad Bunny, which is, I know that he's, like, a big artist, but, like, for black people, we don't we don't listen to, like, Bad Bunny, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, <laughs> me neither. Me neither. I'm white. <laughs> <laughs> or, like, keep yeah. it a being, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm like, but, like, yeah, I, I'm, like, binge artists at times, but, like, yeah, so that uh, influence comes from that. So yeah, yeah. No, I like that. I like your answer, but you're you're gonna love the next question. Then, um, if you could have three dream features, who would it be? Three. And that that's any artist, dead or alive. Three dream features, and it's not one song, just in general. Oh word. Okay. So I uh, I definitely have to get a feature from Michael Jackson. Best answer, yeah. Oh God, I yeah. gotta be a preacher for Michael Jackson mm -hmm. because the He's video gone. gonna be fire. Yeah, hell yeah. The video gonna be top, like budget gonna be out of this world. He's gonna have you know, your like, ass dancing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm with it. Uh, what's the hell choreo? Yeah. What's the choreo? I'm with all of that. Um, MJ. Um, I have to say, K. Dot Kendrick Lamar. Ooh. Definitely have to like, but I don't even know because like he gonna try to go crazy and I'm gonna have to go crazy. Yeah, but you're okay out for sure. Um, and I have to say like, I would want to like produce with Prince or something like that. With who? With Prince. Ooh, crazy <laughs> list, bro. That's a yeah, great list. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, because I know, like, live instrumentation to go crazy, like, prints on the guitar or whatever, or, you know what I'm saying? Have them get on the bass or something like that. Like, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. one. Of the, definitely one of the best lists we've had on the show so far. So, Michael okay, Jackson, word. Kendrick, and Prince. Yeah, can't go wrong with that's... any of them. Word, it, word, okay. Yeah, that's dope, bro. Um, So, where do you see your career uh a year from today? Um or where would you like to see it? So right now my goals are um well, obviously like a year from today I want to see myself bigger than you know and further than where I am. Yeah, of um, course. You know what I mean? Uh I will say right now as an artist, a year from today. I just want to see myself progress, you know what I mean, as far as, like, um, expanding my sound, you know what I'm saying, in more cities and everything, definitely get myself out there. But, um, yeah, man, um, dropping the album on top of the year, sometime in the beginning of the year. So it's – I have I have a lot of goals, I will say that, and I have a lot of plans um, that I am in the works of, you know what I'm saying, executing yeah, yeah. and moving on, so – I can't even say where I want to see myself because I see myself just trying to do what what I can, you know what I mean? As far as music goes. So yeah, that's 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 a good question. I questions like that. Uh, it's like always hard to answer those questions because it's never like a perfect answer. Yeah. And like you know how life goes. You know what I'm saying? Oh like, yeah. That, I can yeah, say that's like, why oh, I make that's why I always say the year, because like people do the five, ten, like yeah, I like, like I don't know what I'm doing next year, week. You know what I mean? A year. Okay, I'll say this. In a year, I'll definitely say I want to see myself on tour with someone. That's dope. Yeah. Within the next year, that's definitely a goal of mine to at least hit like an East Coast tour with someone within the next year, um, or even like like produce for like somebody like crazy like like I produce for like Amir say something Jamonte Osborne so like 
you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to like get more under my belt, you know what I mean? Like, um, and just extend my catalog. Um, definitely make more beats. So now my mind is going, make more beats in the next year. Um, you know what I mean? Just, you know, the goals that you always make, just continue to work. Yeah. You know. Uh, I was going to ask you that, right? Because I know you've been producing for years, right? Maybe even doing more producing than making your own music. Um, how, is is that a difficult battle sometimes for you? Like, because don't, obviously, like, you want to work on your own music all the time, but if you're producing for other people and stuff, um, do you ever find it, like, hard to um, to not just, like, hop on all of your, your best beats? <laughs> Yeah, I I keep a lot of my best beats to be honest with y'all. I'm very stingy. Yeah, I was gonna say you probably have <laughs> some tucked in there. You make that. Level. Yeah, I'm very stingy. I don't I don't play too many games about my beats. Like, um, but yeah, like as far as the beats go, like for for like if, like at, at um, if I if I really rock with you, you know what I'm saying, and you know what I'm saying, we we got a relationship for real, for real, you you get a beat from me. You know what I mean? Like I'm like a hold on to it. Like um, for example, like um, Amir. Um, shout out to Amir. Says, uh, shout, shout, shout out to Amir, man. Um, so Amir, he hit me up on. I, I met him through my boy Jamonte. Um, at a studio session, and we um ended up writing a song. I don't even know if this song ever come out, but um, I did a hook and uh, he did like a verse and my boy Unique and Chaos hopped on that as well. But like, um, we ended up, you know, what I'm saying, following each other on IG and everything. And I went to my boy Smooth Crib and. My boy Smooth has an NPC that he does not use. So I went over there and made me a beat. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I was like cooking up some stuff over there and I had played it on. Um, I basically like, you know, recorded, put it on IG, posted it, whatever. And Amir hopped on my on the post, was like, yo, I joined his fire. And he DM'd me and asked me for the beat and just gave it to him. Oh, hell um, yeah. You're sending that ASAP. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sent the ASAP. Like, go ahead, bro. Go ahead and do your thing. And he went crazy, you know what I'm saying? Um, they went crazy in that joint. Um, called Twin Turbo. Twin Turbo. Um, yeah, go ahead and look that up on Spotify. All your DSPs. Um, yeah, that joint goes crazy, and they they snapped on it. And then um, K Burns. Um, also met K Burns doing with Jamonte. Shout out with Jamonte. My boy connecting niggas. Um, um, me and K Burns did a joint EP. Um, as well, K Burns out of Brooklyn. Yeah, I got um, I gotta check that out. Yeah, that joint is fire. Um, and um, it's called a uh, gang drive a gangster. Um, and he went crazy on that. I sent him like seven beats, and he hopped on. I think he hopped on all of them. He hopped on all of them. Um, and he That's went crazy dope. on that. Um, shout out, shout out, K Burns. Much love to you, my nigga. Um, because he definitely did his thing. Um, and yeah, then. I, 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 no, no, you're good. Oh no, yeah, and then like, well, yeah, that's that's basically, and then like, of course, like I have like production for Jamonte on the side B of God, Body and Soul, and Jamonte always goes crazy. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah I I always give producers like upcoming do producers advice because um, I feel like a lot of them, <clears throat> you know, they work on their music career and they work on beats, and then they just have like a hard drive full of three hundred beats. Like, I know, like you. It sounds crazy, bro, but like a lot of big time artists, they're always looking for beats. So mm -hmm. like, if you even see like a email and like you know their manager's Instagram or something, like yeah, you should just send beats. Like you know what I mean. The worst that can happen that never open them, or you can get a DM one day and be like, yo, like I'm taking this beat. You know what I'm saying? Then you're on. Oh yeah, for sure. See, I'm like, <laughs> like I said, I'm like stingy with them, so I don't even like I. Man, like I've I've always like wanted to do that, but I just I don't know, man. I, I just don't. I, mean, I don't know why I don't yeah. do it. Like I just make beats. And sometimes I'll just like, you know what I'm saying, just make beats and just, just to make them like mm -hmm. to the point where I'm not even like rapping over my own beats. I just like to make my beats just to hear them. And yeah, oh, at yeah. times I can't even write to my own beats. I can only write to someone else's beats. You know what I'm saying? So Maybe I do need to just go in here and start emailing them. Yeah, I'm sure um, you have. I know that's something to do. But I just I'm sure you got hundreds of beats it. sitting there. Yeah, yeah. Collected dust too, probably a hit. You got a hit sitting in there somewhere. 
No, nah, man. I, I sent I sent I have sent a couple emails out, but not 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 like enough to where I I, I could be like, yo, ain't nobody never hop on nothing. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I can't complain about nothing, you know what I mean? So. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> that's so, that's yeah. funny. Um so before we get out of here, bro, I just have uh you know one more question and then we'll have you could tell the fans your socials and everything. Um for sure. So if I'm someone who comes and sees this interview for the first time, um, why should I check out your music? You should check out my music because it's real. Um, talk a lot of reality. I talk about my family. I talk about a lot of pain. Um, but I also uh, talk about, you know what I'm saying, having a good time, getting to it, and motivation for the most part. Um, you know what I'm saying? If you look up for substance, if you're looking for something that – you know, saying you could probably relate to, or something that you may know somebody may want to hear or need to hear, you go with play Denzel Devon for sure. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. So that's that's what you can look forward to. And um, if you ever see Denzel Devon live, you can look forward to a dope performance experience. You have a good time. You're gonna enjoy yourself. And um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, hell yeah, bro. Um. Like I said earlier in the interview, I I loved your project this year. I I thought it was great. I, like I said, I played it three times. I usually don't do that for underground artists. Um, so you definitely have my stamp of approval, bro. Anything I can do personally to further your career, just reach out and ask. You got my information. Um, hey, I, I appreciate you, bro. No, no I'm gonna hold you, bro. Look, I'm apologize. I'm apologize to you in advance because. You remember how we was talking? I, I know, like, you know, they don't know the ins and outs, probably, you know, people listening. But, like, when we was DMing, you know what I'm saying? I told Tom, I was like, yo, <laughs> these niggas be scamming out here, bro. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, they like, are bad. Oh. So, like, I ain't going to hold y'all. I'm going to tell y'all a little bit. Tom was late. But Tom wasn't late on purpose. You know yeah, what I'm saying? So what, time I did was, yeah. what I did was I did report Tom on Cash App because I felt like I was getting scammed. But I'm going to tell you right now, bro. I'm going to tell you now. Oh, on Cash App? Yeah, bro. I'm gonna I tell never you thought, now, yeah. <laughs> if you get it, I could fix it. I could send it back to you for one because I really was like, yo, I know this dude did not. I told him. <laughs> I told him. So, like, my bad. I'm gonna pull Oh no, you're good, fans, bro. My bad. You're good, bro. bro. Trust if they, me. I if, if, they, if they send it back to me, I'm, I'm gonna get you right. I'm gonna get you. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna just move in by and get it back to you. Yeah. But yeah. If you if you could cancel it, that'd be dope. But um, yeah, I'm not too worried about it. But uh, bro, right. no, bro. People, trust me, bro. Uh, it happens more than you think. Like if because because bro, there's so many scammers out here right now. Like it's hard. Right. To, it's hard to do actual business. Man, and I felt bad. I was like, dang, man, my boy. Then when you caught them, I was like, <laughs> no, man. I'm yeah, no, bad. at this point, bro, like, I don't even take it personal because I, I, and I feel bad, right? Because artists, like, they're spending their hard earned money to do whatever they can Facts. to get to the next Facts. level. And then, like, now it makes real businessmen like me, I got to jump through hula hoops to Word. prove that I'm doing business. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. I don't take it personal, bro. Um, I, I just do what I just tell the artist what I can do for them, do it, and then that's it, you know. Ah, uh, yeah, cause look, man, I I wanted to be able to, yo, Tom a good dude, yo, you could reach out to him, he gonna get you right, you know what I'm saying? Cause I'm all about that connecting as well, you know what I'm saying? Cause that's what it's oh, about, yeah. like after the next to the next, and making sure we uplift this whole thing for real. For real so yeah, I'm all about um uplifting the underground artists, bro, cause. You know, like when I started this, obviously it's, you know, to have the biggest artist you can on the platform. But then when I, I started having big artists and I was like, damn, there's no like place right now that someone's doing both. Like, or interview like and a, that's, a and big that's artist. You tapping in the boat too, bro, because like yeah. you're, you're now bridging the whole gap. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't even, you, 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 you know what you're doing, but like, oh, yeah. Impact of it for real, for real, man, is really, really crazy. So, yeah, no, appreciate I appreciate it. you, bro. And uh, like I said, bro, your music is dope. Anything I can do to help, uh, I'll obviously send your tape out to some connections I have, see what they think about it. And right. uh, before we get out of here, bro, if you just want to spell out your social medias for everybody and let them for know sure. where, they find, where they can find you at. For sure, yo. So you can find me at Denzel Devon, D-E-N, 
That's D E N as a Nancy Z E L D A V O N as a Nancy. Um, that's really on all social. Denzel Devon. Um, uh, reasons why video is dropping this month. Uh, I got so I got a baby on the way. So whenever my baby comes, that's gonna be the day the video drops. That's, that's dope, another, bro. It's another reason why I gotta do what I gotta do. You know what I mean? So, um, so yeah, reasons why video dropping on this month or whenever the baby comes. Is um, it your but, is um, it your first? No, this is my third. Oh, okay. That's dope. Yeah. I got two two baby girls, man. How far along is your girl right now? So uh right now she's nine months. So she's thirty eight weeks. Yeah, you, you got me beat by my girl seven months right now. Yeah. Yeah, man. Is this your first? Yeah, my first, yep. Oh, congrats, bro. Appreciate hey, it. It's gonna be look, it's gonna be a learning curve, bro. I mean it's you gonna the first child is always the one where you want to do everything perfect. Yeah. I'm past that already, dude. I just, as long as they're healthy, like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just stock up on diapers. That's really oh. all you're going to need. I diapers got them right here. I got them right here over there. Yeah. Diapers, burp claws, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? Make sure your girls, if, if she breastfeeding, make sure you stash in the, stash in the milk. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. In the freezer. I'm gonna be Superman. Yeah, bro. Get right, get right, man. But yeah. So yeah, man. So video dropping, uh, reasons why. And like I said, right now, uh working on a project um to drop in the beginning of next year. Um, got some dope production on it. Um and um yeah, some pretty real good, real good production on it. Really excited. Um, yeah, right hopefully I can send time. you someone someone real dope your way, maybe uh get a, a big feature on there for you. For sure. Hey, let's get it, man. I'm with it. 